God's going to speak today. I know it. And um, been praying about a lot. This, this is such nice times to be a preacher. <laughs> this is so, so, so good to be a preacher. You know, it's, um, uh, people will always mock you or mock Christians or mock uh, believers. And sometimes friends and family will write you off because of your faith until they're in a place where they need a miracle. Then occasionally then they'll, they'll say, hey, please pray. <laughs> You know, some of, the, some of the bigger, even the presidents know at this time like this, you, you, you need a man of God. You need, you, need, you need a brother or sister that knows Christ. And we need to call on Christ. So this is a good, fruitful time for preachers, you know. It's a good time to, to see, I love it, because it, to see who's bearing fruit. You know, this is where church can't depend on lights and smoke machines and and all these other things that has, has become associated with church. Good, wild music. Now, now if all of those things are taken away, then you actually see what foot you have to stand on. And I, and I, always, and I trust that it will be the Spirit and the presence of God and the Word of God. That's a reality. You know, so when we take those, those things, when those, those, those stuff are a good expression of creativity and, and all of it, but it, is not, it doesn't define the church. Um, so, so the, the church, it's simple, it's basics, you know, it's, it's presence, it's, uh, we camp around the presence, we come together, Jesus said we're two or three are gathered, <laughs> there I am, you know, so, but we're going to see the opposite of what people are, are afraid of, Amen. I'm telling you, we're going to see, it's going to be go for a little while and then there's going to be thousands gathered, Amen. it's going to just go and then it's going to explode into Amen. a revival. I, I think I think that's that's what's going to happen. Amen. So I I'm going to do everything in my willpower today to get you to believe that, <laughs> to change your belief about about what is coming, and about what to expect and what to prepare for. And um, so what you believe is very important, you know. And often when there's a shaking like this then you get to see what you really believe. Because to say, I believe, doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. But when you're faced with a challenge, then you get to see what you believe. You know, so, um, yeah. And this isn't even a challenge yet, really. <laughs> it hasn't even got to challenge. Then people tap out too quickly. All right, so, okay. Jan on your Bible if you got it here. If, if not, put your hand on your heart. You say, this is the Word of God. I believe what it says. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Simple confession like that. Amen. If you read that, every, make that confession every time you read. Um, You'll see, you'll see a lot. All right. We have to speak up. Church has to speak up. Christians have to speak up. Christians can't be quiet in this time. Um, that's always, to me, that's frustrating is when Christians become quiet and when Christians speak like everybody else, when, when Christians are, are worried like everybody else. Yeah. That's, that's, to me, the biggest worry yeah. is when, when, when Christians and believers sound like the rest of the world. Come on, Paul had to write in Colossians and he actually said, you're, don't you know you're not part of the world? Uh, he repeats and says, you're, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. You're here, but you don't operate with the same way. We're not supposed to think the same way. So when you find yourself thinking the same way, it's like an old nature thing. You have to correct yourself. Um, so there's always a fine line. We said it last week between arrogance and, and boldness, between stupidity and faith. <laughs> We want to be faithful with the wisdom and the power of God, not arrogant, not ignorant. You know, um, it's like if you're bleeding, you don't say, I'm not bleeding. You're bleeding if you're bleeding. Okay? Or like if someone is sick, you don't say, I'm not sick. Okay? But um, you, because there's, it's a difference. You're not denying the fact. You, you, you're... You're stopping it from a place of influence. Because, um, so we're going to look at this today. Alright, so uh, how many of you guys saw the movie The Matrix? Okay. 
So I've been thinking about this movie a lot. And uh, if you watch the first one in particular, um, it, to, towards the end uh, of, the, of the movie, Neo, uh, he's been told he's the one, he's the one, he's the one the whole time. And he's trying to figure it out. And then eventually, they, the whole time they're running from Agent Smith, this virus. And they're running away, running away, running away. Until one point, Neo gets up and he turns around and he's going to take, take on Agent Smith. Okay, so forgive me if you haven't seen the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, you haven't lived yet. I don't know if it's the matter with you. But um, uh, he, gets, he gets up and everyone asks, what are you doing? What is he doing? You know, they're watching. And then Morpheus says, he's beginning to believe. He's beginning to believe. And I think when the church begins to believe, when they have that shift in the mindset of, I'm beginning to believe, you know, um, everything is good when you've heard it and you've heard it and you've heard it, but it, it needs to come from, from a head knowledge into, into heart. We've had good teaching about that, where we're actually beginning to believe. Now, this is very important in this next time, in this month, that what we've been re-emphasizing about, what are you hearing? What are you listening to? And I'm not, I'm not foolish to say that stop feeding your, your fear. You have to feed your faith. And we have a responsibility as the church to, to fuel belief in not just Christians, in people in general, but, but starting obviously us because we, we're the light of the world. We're, we're, we're the salt of the earth. We're the people that, that, that people have come to for answers. So we have to have our words seasoned with salt. We have to be light. We have to be confident in this time. Amen. Let's open our Bibles and uh, let's go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And we're going to read... From verse 20. So they brought the boy to Jesus, and when the Spirit saw him, at once it completely convulsed the boy, and he fell to the ground and kept rolling about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked his father, How long has he had this? And he answered, From the time he was a little boy. And it was often thrown him into the fire and into water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, do have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, You say to me, if you can do anything, while all things can be, all things are possible. Like that says, can be. All things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. So now Jesus is, is addressing this, this father's um, belief system. Saying, if you can believe, you can do any, anything. We saw this in the Old Testament when the guys started building a tower. God actually had to come down and stop them because they believed. They were in such a one accord and they believed that it was going to happen. And so there, there is a belief that's important in, in, the, in the body. You have to have a belief system in order to take on anything. And I'm just speaking on a natural level now. I'm not even speaking on a on a faith level. If I can believe, I can do anything. The belief system is so important in, in um, let's start with gymming, for example. I had a conversation the other day with someone. He, he, I was tricking him and he, he was at the gym and he set a certain weight and he went down and he started pushing on the weight. And while I was watching him behind, I was holding the weight down. And while he was ho holding the weight down, he just kept on going because he didn't see me. And then I actually had to show him, but you're, you're pushing more than what, you're, what you know of because in his belief system, he thought he was doing 60 kilograms, but he was maybe doing 80 kilograms effortlessly because he, was just, he just believed I can do this. Your belief system is very important. Okay? Very, very important. All right, very important. So Jesus says, hey, if you can believe, anything is possible. 
At once the father boy gave, um, gave an eager piercing cry, and you know the story, and Jesus, uh, and Jesus healed him. Um, but if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible. I mean, so go to Mark 11, we're there in that place there. Mark 11. All right, Mark 11, verse 22. Um, Jesus answered him, saying, have faith in God. So now, th- those are two things that's different. He's encouraging one man to believe, and another man is saying, have faith in God. To the disciples saying, have faith in God. To the other guy is saying, if you can believe. So it's different. So I'm going to explain belief the best I can. So there's a new science, or well, it's not new, it's been been around for a long time but that is actually getting attention now more than ever like stuff like epigenetics and things like that you can go look it up um, I spoke about before like placebo effects and nocebo effects maybe I must just remind you guys but they did tests on on people that that come to get a um, if they get a headache they would give people disparents or and but it would just be a normal sugar pill and the people would take the pill and they would get relieved from the, um, from the pain. So this is called the placebo effect. And, and they say a third of recoveries that take place in the medical world is not the result of medication but as a result of the placebo effect. Of, they, they took tests on, um, I listened to a friend of mine actually give this teaching there, this one guy with a drip of a certain amount of morphine and he took the drip and he wasn't feeling better until the doctor came and put the same amount of morphine and injected and he started feeling better. Having that, that guy, you know, there's something else when a doctor comes and diagnoses you. Or, so the belief system is triggered and you unconsciously, your body ad- adapts to your belief system. Okay, a little bit strange, a little bit different, but it's good just so that I think Christians also need to know what they're talking about. Because before it was discovered as science, it was all, yeah, <laughs> in the scriptures. All of the stuff is, yeah. So we need to, we need to be smart. You know, we need to know what's, what's going on. But the problem here is, is the same thing happens with the negatives. It's not just believing the, the positive. There's another one called the nocebo effect is when it's negative. Meaning, sometimes if a doctor tells you you're going to die, the sickness is going to kill you. They've found that your belief will kill you. Because, yeah, it kills you. You say it's possible to, to die from a belief. <laughs> that someone said you're going to die. It's true. Now, with that, with that in mind, I want you to consider the fear that's happening all around the world with what's being said and what is being broadcasted all over the world and the effect that it is having on people. Think about this. What, what system, do you think it's a placebo or a nocebo? How many people are getting sick without anything? <laughs> they, they say the problem like in America right now is like 90% of the people coming in don't have the virus. They think that they have the virus. <laughs> they're actually getting sick because of paranoia and, and things like that. So they go in because they, they indulge themselves on television the whole day and saying, okay, these are the symptoms. So, oh, here comes the first symptom. I'm dying. So the whole world, the media, is, is, uh, is poisoning people's belief system. And people just like to just listen and listen and listen. And what's happening is the, people's immune systems are dropping. And people are getting sick. Yo, okay. So it's, it's, it's listen, this is, this is not, this is like now general knowledge. Like my dad shared that thing of, of Caroline Leaf. Like how much percentage does, if you just laugh, does it boost your immune system? If you listen to stuff that makes you laugh, your immune system goes up. Laughter is the best medicine. Nobody's laughing. <laughs> Just put Leon Schuster on or something. It will do better, better for you than, than, than the news. Something funny. Something, something good. 
you know? All right. I can see you guys have been listening to news the whole time. <laughs> been marinating in negativity. We need to stop that. We need to stop that. So, can we find reason to be joyful and a reason to, to be full of enthusiasm in life? And, and that's, I think that is uh, one of the biggest, the biggest challenges right now. So, um, faith, he said, have faith in God. We've taught before that who's got, your, who's got an Amplified Bible here or a King James Bible here? Okay, if you look at the bottom of a King James Bible, you'll see there's a footnote there that actually says the translation is, have the faith of God. It's different. So it's not, it's not like belief that is um, like I believe. Um, Kirby, a friend of mine, we, were, uh, we spoke about this two days ago. And uh, he was telling me that belief, and I think he put it very well. He said, belief is vertical. And he says, faith is horizontal. And I, I thought that was maybe a nice way of putting it. Faith is horizontal, belief is vertical. Um, so, but faith is not, faith is from God. Faith is a gift that, every, that God gives to us. Have the faith of God. So I can have a belief system that is empowered by faith. I love that. Yeah. And if, if my belief system agrees with, with faith, good. Amen. Good. So, so God actually, Jesus says, have faith in God. I tell you, have the faith of God or have faith in the faith of God. If any one of you say to this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, and, but shall believe those things, what he says, will come to pass. Therefore I say unto you, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, receive them and you shall have them. Okay, so he gave the recipe, ask, believe, receive. So today, when we're addressing anything in life, you know, because right now, the challenge is not the virus, really. The challenge is our businesses. The challenge is, is our... Um, you know, how it's the, the side effects, how people are reacting and things. So that's the things that we need to ask God for now. But, um, so we need to ask. Have you asked? Okay, you can keep asking. But once you've asked, believe. And then start saying thank you. Because thank you is actually, it's, it's, it takes you from anxiety to, to peace. So when I start saying thank you, Father. Thank you that all my needs are met. Thank you that, that, that all, every financial whatever thing that needs to be met is going gonna, is gonna to be met. You know? Thank you that in the next coming months we're going to prosper. Amen. Thank you, Father, that no virus will come near my family. Amen. Whatever it is, you ask. Then you believe. And out of, out of belief, you start saying thank you. And that's how you, I think I believe, that's how you receive. That's how you receive. You just say thank you. And while you're doing that, naturally, your immune system is being built up. How many guys know you need a, a good immune system? <laughs> Come on. Do you know that spirituality, faith, affects your biological immune system? No, Bruce, we didn't know that. Yes, Bruce, we did know that. Yes. You know, when you worship, it affects your... They, I said it last week, they tested it. How if you pray in the Spirit... Your, for a certain amount of time, your immune system goes up. So all of these things are, 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 are in the Bible. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, let's go quickly to um, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to you know, share some stuff with you that's going to bless you. Verse 1, Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is more than just feeling bad and feeling guilty. <laughs> condemnation is not just about feeling guilty 
and being judged <laughs> by, by someone who said something ugly about you. Condemnation is more than that. You know, take it further than that. The, the whole world fell under condemnation. The whole world fell under sin's bondage, under sickness, under death. In Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. And, and you have to know that. Because when you know it, it affects you. When you don't know it, it doesn't affect you. You have to know that. He says, verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You know, people that are saying stuff like, everyone's going to get it. Everyone's going to get it. Everyone's going to get it. No, don't have to take it. You don't have to take it. You can hear it. You can be informed, but you don't have to take it. Amen. Um, Amen. You know, we don't run into fire. I'm not going to run into fire and say I'm not going to be burned. But I do have a promise that if I am in the fire, I will not be burned. Amen. So those are very important lines to make between being stupid and being faith-driven. Okay? So this scripture, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, you know, um, John G. Lake actually went in and had a laboratory study this. Um, there was some disease. Do you know what the name of the disease? Who knows? It's very similar. These things have broken out before. It's nothing new. And, uh, and they actually, um, he went in and, and he said, well, study the germs. And they, they put the germs on his hand. And he says, and they will, they will die. And he quoted the scripture. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. And they watched how those germs just died. Yeah. So you can have that kind of faith if you would want, if you want to. Amen. But it's, it's one thing to have the head knowledge, and it's one thing to actually move in the spirit. You know, um, a lot of people like to talk. <laughs> we don't talk, we, we, we live, you know, we don't, just, we don't just speak it. Verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who, yeah, thank you, he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will, re, will restore to life your mortal bodies. So do you see that the spirit has an impact on your mortal body? Amen. Come on, the spirit has an effect on your body. Other, other translation says he will quicken your body. It means there's going to be a quickening happening in the, in the body. So if the spirit that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken to life your mortal body. So when you put, put your, keep your finger there or just quickly go to Ephesians because this is one of my Favorites, this is one that I started jogging. When I jogged, I would start quoting to my father-in-law. Shame that I also know scriptures for those who missed last week's. He says, verse 19, so that you can know what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in us. In us who believed as demonstrated when he raised Christ from the dead. So the spirit that was, says the spirit inside of you will bring to life your mortal body, will quicken your mortal body, has an effect on your mortal body. Amen. Every miracle that's happened was done by that spirit. Amen. Every, Amen. Everything that you've seen, every cancer that's disappeared, every leper that's been healed, every HIV patient, that was, it was that spirit that did that. That spirit is on the inside of you and you have to know it. He says, so that you can know what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of His power in and for us yeah. who believe. Amen. So there must be a faith. You need to feed your faith. Amen. Amen. So um, I had a, I, I, I told you, some of you guys at prayer meeting, I had a dream about this. Um, this I was sitting in a hospital and uh, there was this paralyzed man in the bed and uh, I was just sitting there watching. Next thing, over some time, he gets out of the bed and he starts walking without me saying or doing anything. And I remember saying to him, hey, you're walking, look what's going on. And he's like, oh yeah, 
I'm walking. And, and I, I think it's, it's got to do with, with, this, with this virus, this time, and the, the paralysis that, that people are going to experience for a little bit. But we're not going to experience it. Amen. But they, they're going to get to a place where they actually begin to move again. And they think, oh, it wasn't, wasn't so deadly as what I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And I, I said, okay, God, well, then I'm going to do everything in my power to, to speak life. And even if it's just boosting the immunity of the, of the subconscious minds, you know, like, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And, the, and that the death toll is just going to drop and drop and drop and drop and drop and drop. And we're not going to see such Amen. fatal figures in South Africa. And if two or three would agree <laughs> concerning anything, it will be done. Amen. There we go. So power in agreement. I, I shared this with, with um, another friend of mine overseas. And he just said, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. He didn't, he didn't even say, maybe, I don't know. He just said, you're right. We two or three agree. Yeah, we take it. Yes, you're right. It'll be like that. We were speaking about this on, on Friday. So just, just to show you how the newspapers and the media are trying to control you. Um, where, where is the report on the rain that we've been having? Because if you don't remember a long time ago, or oh, about a couple of months ago, they were saying, worst drought ever. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Now, that, now that that's not a problem, they're not reporting that we've been getting such a good amount of rain. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's saying, wow, thank you. Nobody's taking pictures of the crops that are growing. Nobody's putting that in the newspaper. They're just finding the next thing to feed and poison you. Because people are buying into it. And so as long as people are making money from it, they're profiting from your fear, and they're killing you while they're, while they're doing it. So I'm not ag- arrogant. I like to be informed as well. I want to know what's going on. But I've got to know when they're going overboard to try and... To try and, 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 and. You know, every time you get in your car, there's a risk. Every, every time you go out into the street, there's a risk. Um, so I want you to get your minds right and fixed. Amen. Good. So I want to give you some, some tips quickly. Just how to boost your immune system. <laughs> Go to uh, Jude. When last have you heard anyone preach out of Jude? Have you guys knew that there's a letter called Jude in the New Testament? Jude. Eh? Somewhere there in the Bible. Yeah. Don't be ashamed to look in the index. Don't be ashamed. Jude is just before the book of Revelation. Verse 20. He says, But you, beloved. That's you, beloved. Don't you think it's awesome that he says beloved? He's just trying to say, Be loved. <laughs> be loved. You are loved. Beloved, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. So build yourself up. You're building yourself up when you pray in the Spirit. Come on, if you're on your weakest, most negative, most whatever place we all find ourselves in, we have a, a, a recommendation to build yourself up on your most holy faith. How do you do it? You pray in the spirit Amen. you pray in the spirit how do you pray in the spirit well this is this is really how you pray in the spirit it's not in the understanding it's not in the understanding it's more than what you can understand so you pray in the spirit I, jesus gave a good example when he prayed um i believe it's in the spirit just before he raised lazarus from the dead the bible says that he started making groanings yeah. uh, uh, And it actually says he started making sounds like a horse. (laughs) That's what it says. It's something that you can't utter. So I know over years we've we've done the, you know, the ribibis and those things. That's also good. But I want to make it really simple. 
If you receive the Spirit of God, you can pray in the Spirit. Amen. And uh, sometimes it's just, oh God. Oh God. And it's a groaning. That's what Romans 8 and John 11 says. He says that the Spirit prays inside of you with groanings that cannot be uttered. So it's like a groaning. It's, a, it's, a, it's not just the moving of the mouth. It's deeper. But yeah, but it's also praying in the Spirit. So Paul says, I pray in the Spirit and I pray in the understanding. So sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes you need to get angry. <laughs> and you need to put emotion into it. And then you, and then you just pray for it. I mean, I hope that helps. If you can, I just met people that said that, but they don't know how to pray in the Spirit. They don't know how to, you know, Zembra, Shiliman, all those things. They don't know how to do that. So I said, well, can you groan? Can you groan? Start from there. Just groan. Just groan. And it will come. So everyone can pray. In the, if you've got the Spirit of God, you can pray in the Spirit. And then um, go to Acts chapter 20. Thank you, thank you. Acts 20. Paul gets up in verse 32 and he says, And now, brothers and sisters, I commit you to God. I deposit you in His charge. I am entrusting you to His protection and care. And I commend you to the word of His grace. Come on. I commend you to the, to the word of His grace. It is able to, give, to build you up. All right. <laughs> the word of grace is able to build you up and to give you your inheritance among all God's set apart ones. Okay. The word of grace. So what you're hearing. It is able to build you up. So Hearing, hearing the Word of God, can that have an effect on even my body? Absolutely, yes it can. So if you quickly go to Proverbs 4, verse 20. And we're going to read a few verses there. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. So when you hear the right words, knowing what authority it comes from, it's going to affect your body. <laughs> so hear life. Jesus said, I have come so that you may have life and have life more abundantly. If you wonder why are you depressed, well, just pay attention to what you're listening to. Really, have a look around with the, the friends that, you, that you're spending time with. Check the toxic environments that you're in the whole time. Can you do something about it? Yes, in this age, yes, you can. If you've got some data, <laughs> you can stream a podcast that's just speaking life. It's completely free. You can put your Bible, your audio Bible on at work and just put Proverbs on it. You can put Psalms on it. You can just let it run. You can put worship music on in your house. Amen. You don't need to feed your fears the whole time. You have to feed your faith. Amen. Amen. You have to. Yeah. While the whole world is expecting doom and gloom, you, you will experience life to the overflow. Amen. Amen. So, so feed your faith. Starve your doubts. Starve your doubts. Um, Chris Valentin he put a, a, a challenge out to the whole church of Bethel saying, for 40 days we're going to fast. He says, in this fast, you're going to eat chocolate. You're going to eat hamburgers and all the good stuff you're going to eat, but you're not going to fear for 40 days. Amen. <laughs> so for 40 days, for the next month, you're going to do everything to not feed your fear. So, That's good. yeah, Amen. yeah. And it comes with eating chocolate. Any chocolate you want, you can eat. And, uh, and you, can, you can enjoy good chocolate. So, now, in closing, <laughs> in closing, 
Some people are like, yeah, thank you. You know, like this is enough. Like even just what I've just shared with you, if you take this and practice it, which most people don't want to, not a lot of people have got an ear for good news. Not a lot of people have got an appetite for good news. You know, you've got to actually have a, a, good, a good appetite. I heard that um, someone said that they did a test on, on uh, there was a study. They did a test on this, on this one person and they gave him a thousand calories in a milkshake to drink. And then they gave him what looked like a healthy, you know, um, drink. But it also had a thousand calories. When they, when they received the other one, it actually had a good effect on them by actually believing um, that this one, it, that it was good for you. So there we go. Thank you. Um, and then they also found out that people who say stuff like, I like my carbs, but I hate my veggies, but I eat it anyway and I minimize my carbs, they found that those people didn't benefit really well as people who loved their veggies and didn't like their carbs. They, because your body responded well to, to the belief and the love of it. And so what, my point that I'm trying to make is, it doesn't just help you listen, you need to develop an appetite for good stuff. Amen. And so the more you just, I want to hear the good stuff, and I don't want to hear the bad stuff. I don't like hearing the negativity. You know, some people know they mustn't listen to fear-driven things, but, they, but we still click it because we still want to. Oh, this is bad. No, we can't listen to it. So avoid, avoid listening to that. All right, so I said we're going to um, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. All right, verse 23, you have been regenerated, you've been born again, not from a mortal origin, but from one that is immortal by the ever-living and lasting Word of God. So you've got that other kind of DNA. <laughs> You've got something else that's, that, that's why you can't react like the rest of the world. You've been born again, not from a mortal origin, from one that is immortal. You have got eternal life, an eternal spirit, a deathless spirit. Amen. You're an eternal being. And, and we need to realize that. We can look, science is going to, is going to discover the effects of this kind of stuff, like real soon. Okay, so now I want to show you that. So you have, you have eternal um, DNA. Have a look at verse 18. Again, you must know. So that word is very important. When it emphasizes you got to know it, that you may know. You must know that you were redeemed. You were ransomed from the useless, fruitless, way of living inherited um, inherited by tradition from your forefathers not with corruptible things such as silver and gold but you were purchased with the precious blood of Christ Amen. like that of a sacrificial lamb Amen. and Peter goes on to write later he says hey by his stripes you were healed <laughs> so there was a there was a price that was paid 2,000 years ago it actually says that you were healed Isaiah 53 says we are healed but Peter takes it a step further and he says, no, you were healed. So you were healed. So before there was even a problem, you were already healed. Amen. He says, you must know that you were redeemed, not with corruptible things such as silver and gold. If you have a coin of silver, think how long, if you, if you put man's lifespan, 
What do you think will outlast? Silver or the man? Silver. Peter says that's corruptible. He compares the blood of Jesus to silver and gold. And he says the blood of Jesus outlasts silver and gold. Amen. That's in value and that is in, in length of life as well. And uh, uh, I heard a theologian say the blood of Jesus is dried up a long time ago. Can you believe that? No, the blood of Jesus is as effective and as powerful as what it was 2,000 years ago. And it will always be. And you were bought with that price. Come on. Don't do this out of fear and paint your posts and say, it's not going to come past me. Have enough confidence to say it's not going to come near my city. It's not going to come near any area where I am. Have enough confidence to take it past just my fear and to say, to have the boldness and to actually say, I plead the blood of Jesus Amen. over you. Amen. Plead the blood of Jesus over my family, yeah. over my business, over, you know, do it. It's incorruptible. It is full of power yes. and it is eternal Amen. and it is real. So one of the things uh, we read it last week, but 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says, this is why you're, you're sick. This is why some of you have died. Because you have not received and you have not discerned the blood of Jesus. Take time in, this, in these times um, to have communion by yourself and with your family. Do it. Force yourself to do it. So we're going to have communion. It's good for you. <laughs> Amen. So now, um, yeah, Giannis actually messaged me this week and he said, well, you know, we need, to, we need to help people and I agree with him. But cult just cultivate the right atmosphere in your house. And uh, so this is just step-by-step -step things. When you pray, when you pray, when you ask God, check, am I praying from fear? Am I praying from faith? It's okay to say, Lord, help me. Lord, I'm afraid. Pray yourself. Now, how to fix that? You start worshiping God. Put on a worship song. Put on whatever. Take, take psalms and you start quoting it. You know, there's a... Hundreds of psalms that you can quote. That's good. And you, and you boost your faith. And you boost your immune system until there's just no fear. So, so pray. Once you've prayed, ask. Once you've asked, believe. Once you've believed, say thank you. Amen. Put worship stuff on. Amen. When you hear something is affecting, listen to your family what's happening. Change. Um, correct if you have to. You know, when you see faith, uh, fear is creeping in, stop it and say, no, there's deception coming in. And we don't, we don't allow. Take it further than that. Take it into town. Okay. Closing, I said earlier as well, um, I want to encourage people, like with the faith stuff, you don't need to lay hands on anyone. Cooperate with the government. You don't need to lay hands for someone to receive a miracle. You don't, when you pray for someone, you don't need to put your hands on them. Okay. Peter walked in such a way that his shadow healed the sick. In such a way, live in a realm of consciousness of the presence of God. Walk in the confidence of God. Is, man, the sun that's shining over me is the Lamb. Is <laughs> the, the, the light of the Lamb. Walk in such a consciousness that you know that wherever you're walking, you're not spreading germs. <laughs> you're spreading life. Amen. Let's do it. Let's just oppose it. Let's oppose it. And, and not in arrogance. Cooperation with the government. But oppose the spirit of fear in every way. Amen. Come, let's stand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we can gather in unity today. In one mindset. And we can know that you've already given us the victory. You know, like your word says, says that we do not yet see all things subject to man, but we do see Jesus. So Jesus, we see all things subject to you, and we want to acknowledge that you, you already won, and uh, we know that you have given us the victory. And I prophesy that there'll be an overflow 
and, and everyone can expect it, an anticipation in each believer's heart of the goodness of God, that there's going to be an overflow in the midst of where people lack. There's going to be an abundance of joy. There's going to be an abundance of peace. There's going to be abundance of whatever the need is, there will be an overflow. And we know that it is our portion in Christ Jesus. So we thank you for confidence. We thank you for boldness in this time. And thank you that, that, yeah, that we can be a light in, in dark places. So, and right now, if you've got a pain in your body or something, just put your hand there where the pain is. Oh, Father, right now, we thank you that every pain leaves in Jesus' name. Every pain leaves. Go right now. Every sickness, every illness, whatever it is, every, any irritation, um, any letter that came from the doctor that don't agree with the Word of God, Right now, in Jesus' name, we declare healing, we declare peace in the body, we declare life right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I just feel someone with uh, something that's not like in your thumb, down, down your arm to your thumb, it's like it affects your thumb, that just goes right now. In Jesus' name, that whole hand completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.